I do want to bring in Dennis Kelleher. He is co-founder and CEO of Better Markets. Dennis is also a former member of the Federal Reserve Banking and Securities Agency Review Team. Better Markets, by the way, is a D.C.-based nonprofit that was established to make uh, finance and government serve society, fight injustice and equality. So, Dennis, um, first of all, I want to get your take on the Fed opening this probe into SVB oversight. A lot of criticism after the collapse of the firm uh, that the Fed didn't do enough, that it missed all kinds of red flags. What was the red flag that you feel that should have been alarming to the Federal Reserve and any of its regulators? Sure. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. Um, there were multiple screaming red flags flying for many, many months that were identified and talked about by many, except the Federal Reserve. And let's go through them. Number one, there's a very high concentration of bank customers in the greater Silicon Valley area, a great concentration of the type of business activity of those concentrate of those customers, a con geographic concentration. They also had an outsized reliance on uninsured depositors. They also had a massive asset liability mismatch that created enormous unrealized losses uh, that were growing by the day. And in terms of seeing it, on November 11, 2022, the Wall Street Journal did a front page story that detailed uh, the unrealized losses of Silicon Valley Bank, including that as of September 30th of 2022, the unrealized losses at Silicon Valley Bank exceeded its equity. Hmm. And it talked about the risks of liquidity and depositor flight. Those risks materialized. On top of that, short sellers have been circling this bank for many months, including one who said that Silicon Valley Bank was a ticking time bomb in plain view. And hmm. rating agencies also uh, identified problems. So why is it that the media, um, short sellers and others all saw the multiple screaming red flags, but not the Federal Reserve supervisors? That's a, certainly a big question here. I am curious. Talk about that liquidity mismatch a little bit more, Dennis, because I'm trying to sort of wrap my head around it. We know that this is, to a certain extent, not uncommon. We know that there is that liquidity mismatch, but there is supposed to be sort of, particularly if you're a systemically important bank, obviously, there has to be some sort of matching of cash flows in order to prepare for these types of events here. Why did SVB not have any sort of guardrails, at least in the sense that we would sort of look to with the bigger banks? So, you know, it's, it's an interesting question, uh, but the first uh, answer is that the executives, officers, and directors of this bank clearly engaged in reckless activities uh, in violation of their duties to run a safe and sound bank uh, that doesn't pose a threat to financial stability. Um, the primary policemen of that, of Federal Reserve supervisors, who, by the way, are at the bank at all, almost all times or frequently um, reviewing their activities, with the full duty, power, and authority to require the bank to uh, operate in a safe and sound manner, including they could order prompt corrective action, uh, they could issue cease and desist. They had a lot of power. This is the 16th largest bank in the United States, mm -hmm. um, and none of that happened. And so you end up with this multiple problems. On the asset liability side, a lot of banks were caught by the pace and degree of the Federal Reserve's uh, yeah. rate increases and the quick move from QE to QT. Yeah. That was a known risk to the uh, balance sheets of all banks and supervisors should have been acutely attuned to that. Another mystery how this could possibly have been missed. And I think it's important to remember there's two different things here. There's regulation of banks and there's supervision of banks and they're related, but they're distinct. And so the law that deregulated these banks in 2018 and the Fed and Trump's administration's Federal Reserve appointees, Chairman Powell and Randy Quarles doing four years of deregulation, uh -huh. that's different than the supervision by the Federal Reserve. So is it a case of just beefing up supervision by adding more people or changing the, the parameters for how the supervisors would look and assess, look at and assess these banks? Scarlett, that's a great question. And the real issue here is, we need to roll back the deregulation that was baseless and mindless done by the Trump deregulators. And separately, we have to figure out how the Federal Reserve supervisors could have failed so flagrantly here. We don't yet know why. What we do need is a complete, thorough, independent investigation of the Federal Reserve supervisors here. The Federal Reserve just announced that the vice chair for supervision is going to conduct an investigation of itself. Yeah. The Fed cannot investigate itself. We need an outside independent investigator 
who will look at this objectively and really get to the bottom of it. Because let's remember, it was only a couple of years ago that Federal Reserve supervision completely missed Wells Fargo's years-long predatory illegal abuse of customers. Right. The, the very same supervisors. And then they said that they did this big review yeah. and they all got religion and they were ne that was never going to happen again. And here we are just a few years later with this this crap. Let's make no mistake about it. Yeah. This collapse could have and should have been mitigated, identified and mitigated many months ago. And yeah. if the media could have reported on it and short sellers saw it, Federal Reserve supervisors sure as heck should have seen it. All right, Dennis, a lot to unpack here. And we hope to have you back uh, very soon uh, for a longer conversation. I'm going to have to leave it there. Uh, this is, of course, a story uh, that has a long way to go. Dennis Keller over at Better Markets and really a longtime fixture in the financial regulatory space down in Washington. Coming up, we do want to turn back uh, to the broader market. And, well, remember the macro 